Hello everyone. Today's data science interview question is called Color History. It's a medium level question from Amazon. And if you want to follow along with me, click on the link in the description box below. In this question, we need to find the colors whose first and last calls were made to the same person on a given day. The expected output is a table containing the caller ID, the recipient ID, and the date called. Let's explore the data set for a second. The data set provided is color history and it only has three columns, color ID, recipient ID, and date called. And let's click on the preview button. So the table is basically a call log showing the ID of the caller, who they called, and the exact time and date of when the call was made. So in the data set, we don't actually have the first and last call recipient readily available. So a major chunk of our task today will be to find that out. Also notice that we've been provided a date time object over here, but the time portion is not exactly relevant to our task. So we will only extract the date part of the date call column. Now that we're familiar with the table, let's formulate our approach. Solving the problem mainly requires us to 1. Determine the first and last caller for each person per day, 2. Check if those two call recipients are the same, and if so, 3. Output the ID of the caller, the receiver, and the date of when the call happened. So let me write that down for you. Now let's look into each of these steps in detail and code the solution. Step 1. Determine first and last caller per caller per day. Looking back at the data set provided, we have a full history of calls across all users and during the entire period. But our question requires our focus to be more at a granular level. What we want to do is to group the data for each of these caller IDs and identify for every date what is the recipient ID for the first and the last call of that particular date. For example, caller ID 1 has made a few calls on January 1st to uh, caller number 2 and 3 and 4, but the first one was to caller 2 at 9 a.m. and the last call was to caller number 4 at 11 p.m. on the same date. Meanwhile, caller 2 has made several calls on various dates, for example, on July 5th, there were three calls and the first one of which was to caller number five and the last one was to caller number three. But on July 6th, this is where I would like to draw your attention. It's that the caller number two has called five and that's the only call of the day, which means technically this was the first and the last call recipient. So now we will create two new columns to extract this information so that we can eventually compare them in the next step. In complex analysis like this, window functions come in very handy as they allow us to refine the data set into different levels of granularity, perform some transformations with those sections, and finally either calculate or retrieve a value based exclusively on each of these subsections. For this problem particularly, we will use the first value function and here's the syntax. So this syntax reveals what's really happening in the background, which is it first creates subsets of the data based on the partition by clause. Then it sorts each of the subsets based on the order by clause and then performs the function or the main operation on the ordered partition. All right, now let's begin our solution. Let's build this query part by part, like we explained the syntax. So let's start with the partition by part. First SQL will read the partition by clause, and it creates subsets of data based on the columns provided. For our task, we want to group the data set at two levels, caller ID and the date called, so that we have a partition for every unique caller ID and date called combination. After partitioning the data set, you can reorder the rows within these partitions. To find the first and last call recipient, we need to arrange each partition from the earliest to the latest call time. So let's order them by date called. So here we're not separating the date and time component because we need 
to uh, list the time from earliest to latest as well. And finally, we can call our function, which is first value, to return the first value of these ordered partitions. So let's do that. So we're going to perform the first value on the recipient ID column over partition by. And well, we can also identify the recipient to the last call using the same logic. But in order to do that, we will reverse the order of the date called column so that the latest call becomes the first value in each partition. So let's select these columns. Now let's run this query. And here's the output. Now here you can notice that the window functions will return a value for every row in the partition. Meanwhile, group by function or group by aggregation will always return a single row for each aggregation. And that makes it easier to understand what operation was done on the data. So when you're operating on window functions, it's not unlikely to make mistakes without even realizing it. For example, if we had not used the date function in the partition by clause, the timestamp would also have been considered for the partition. And because each caller initiates only one call at any specific time, each row would most likely have become a partition in itself. Our window functions will return a value, but the results would have been slightly different. Similarly, if we had performed partition only on the caller ID column and not on date called, our final query would have returned the ID of the very first recipient and not the recipient of the first call for each day. So if you feel like you had the right query but didn't get the same results, it's helpful to run through the steps to identify how your window function is working in the background. Let's move on to step two, which is to compare the IDs of the first and last call recipients. We have identified the IDs of the first and last calls in the previous table, but we only want results where the first call uh, value is equal to the last call. While it would be convenient for us to specify this in the WHERE clause, window functions are, however, only calculated after the WHERE clause. So putting it in the WHERE clause will return an error because the first and last call columns have not even been calculated yet when SQL reads through the WHERE clause. So actually, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we do write a WHERE clause to this query and run it, we would find an error that says unknown column first call in WHERE clause. That's because the first call has not even been calculated yet and neither has last call. So to filter based on the results of a window function, we first need to write a subquery or a CTE. So let's create a CTE called first and last. Now let's select the entries where the two columns are equal. I'll select all from, from first and last, where the first call equals the last call. All right, let's run the code now. And here we are, we have the first and last call, um, only those that are equal. And it just so happens that all of them are from the caller ID too. All right, let's move on to step three, which is to retrieve the caller ID, recipient ID, and the date called fields. From here, we only want the caller ID, recipient ID, and the date called columns where the conditions hold true. So let's just select over here. Let me focus over there. Let's only select the caller ID. Okay. Now let's run the code and here you go. Here we can see that there are some duplicates over here. For example, there's three entries uh, of the call made from two to four on 2nd of August, right? Um, this is because of something that we described earlier. 
window functions actually provide additional information so that the underlying data set remains unchanged. Now we just have to remove the duplicates and for that we will use a distinct clause in the select statement like this. All right, and now if we run the code again, we can see that the duplicates have been removed. So here's our final solution and let's validate the solution. Let's check the solution here and yep, our answer is correct. And there we go. Window functions are a favorite in interviews, so it really pays off if you know them in depth. In this short video, we talked about how window functions operate, when window functions are calculated in a query, and how it differs from a group by function. Now keep those pointers in mind and good luck in your interviews. You can find and practice more window functions and SQL related interview questions in our Stratus Crash platform and our YouTube channel. So don't forget to check them out and see you in the next video.